Well, you need, especially at our parish, but really any place you go, you need an accurate liturgical calendar. Ours, Father Sotenovich and I do this one. It is the, simply the best. Um, nobody has anything close to this. See, the other places will have calendars and it'll tell you, oh, today is Christmas, but that's it. They don't tell you the specific prayers you're going to need um, or anything like that. Okay, now, in general, in general, we'll start by blowing my nose. Okay, now, the Mass, and therefore how you're going to use the Missal, there's two elements, and actually probably even a, a third that we'll go into, but basically two elements that make up the um, what makes the mass a daily mass, the daily mass, and how to use the missal? Okay, now one is called the we we'll, gave it a name, the ordinary of the mass. Okay, the other are the propers. In other words, the ordinary. There's a part that doesn't change, that's the same from one mass to the other, and then there's the part that changes, that makes that the mass of the day. Okay, so, you, and the whole learning to use the missile is learning when to go back and forth and where to find the prayers. So, one thing, you, you, if you need more, if we need more seats, we got a couple extra chairs too. Yeah, you can fit over there. Um, now, one thing you must do, do not get to church and then start flipping your missile around. You take your calendar, you sit down at home with your missile, and you put the ribbons where they belong. Now, sometimes it's really easy, and sometimes it's not really easy. But if it makes you feel any better, it's the same or worse for me at the altar. Because there are masses where I literally need six ribbons in there. Six different ribbons, and I have to flip back and forth. I know it looks a little bit like I'm lost when I'm flipping between them, but it's actually planned that way. So let's just take, okay, so just remember that. The, we go the part that never changes and the part that changes with the day that makes it the mass of the day and know when to flip around. So what we're going to do, I have a Lassance missile here. I know some people have St. Andrews or other ones. All the same stuff is in them, but it's in different places. So um, I can wait while people find their, their prayers. But the reason why we get these missiles is they have everything they're supposed to have in them, whether it's the St. Andrews or the uh, Lassans. Okay, so today is the 7th of November. So we look on the calendar, and what does it say? Well, it's the, pro it's the mass proper of the octave. And what does that mean? Well, s a number of feasts in the church are traditionally so important that you don't just celebrate them for one day. You celebrate them for a week, okay? Now, one of them is one we just celebrated, and we're still riding the wake of that one. That is the Feast of All Saints. The Feast of All Saints has what we call an octave, which means you celebrate it for a whole week, okay? Now, so it says Mass proper of the octave. What is the Mass proper of the octave? The Mass proper of the octave is the Mass from All Saints Day in this case. So it's the Mass of the Feast, if there's no other feast day. Like if you look at this week, um, Going back to the beginning, so we have the Feast of All Saints, but then we have the then we have All Souls Day, and then we had a Sunday going on, and and various things along the way. Um, so you have to know well it, is the saint more important than the feast uh, than the octave on this particular day, and what do we do here? Okay, so here we are. Let's first then. Find what we call the ordinary of the Mass in your Missal. Just, um, you might have to look in, the, in your table of contents for it. 
but find what's called the ordinary of the Mass. Now, we'll be doing the ordinary of low Mass, okay? Um, and why do I say that? Because if you go to the very, very, like before the beginning of the ordinary Mass, there's um, the asparagus or the vidi aquam that we, we, we almost never do because that they're only for uh, some masses or it's obligatory at a solemn mass if it's on a Sunday. It's optional for a sun mass on a Sunday. Um, and most of the time we, we don't do it just for time constraints because it, it takes we'll quite a bit of time. It's on page 953 in the same Okay. And it's pa on page 756 mm -hmm. in the Lasans. And then whatever mysterious page and whatever other mysterious missile you have. Um, another thing that's important is you do not want a missile or a reprint that is dated 1955 or younger. So 55, 56, all the way to 62. You do not want that missile. It does not have what you're looking for in it. Um, Starting in 1955, they began the hatchet job on the missile. And they went through it and just started willy-nilly cutting out all kinds of things. And we don't care because we do them. We do them anyway. All right, so has everybody got the ordinary pegged there? It starts with the name of the Father and Son. Okay, now, the next thing... <laughs> you're going to want to find is the, the, um, the Mass for All Saints Day, November 1st. That's on page 1543 in the same Missile. And 1265 if you're in the Lasance. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's, that's a good part of the work done there already. Some masses are as simple as that, okay? Um, and with one other thing in there, and that would be the, the preface and, and certain things like that. Some masses are as simple as that, but not this one, not today. So here we have then, pref, um, a proper of octave, Gaudiamo. So we tell you the first word in Latin of the mass being said that day, so you know you're in the right place. So if you look at the, the Feast of All Saints, you look at the introit, which is the very first thing there, and it says Gaudiamus, mm -hmm. then Gaudiamus. We, let's rejoice, because you found it. Um, okay, so we give you that so you know you're on the right page. So a proper of octave Gaudiamus, um, Gloria, which will be in the, the, the ordinary, you don't need to go looking for that. Uh, second, prayer to the Holy Ghost, and third, for the church or the Pope. Now here's where you have to do a little searching. Uh, in the Lasance Missal, it's under a section called Additional Prayers, and the prayer for the Holy Ghost is on 827, 827, 827. And in the St. Andrews? It's in uh, 17, uh, for the Pope? For the, for the Holy Ghost first. Okay, and in the, in the Lasance Missal, the other prayers, whether it is for the church or for the Pope, are two pages before that. 1716. 1716. 1716. 1716 in St. Andrews. 825. And 8, yeah, 825 for the second or third, third of them. So it goes, then 827, then it'll go back to 8. So this is, this is another thing about this, is sometimes you go backwards in pages. 
So for the, okay, now the other thing I'm telling you that, that you want to know is a class of things called the orations of the Mass. And this is very important. Hey, Joe, do you got a missile or do you need one? Are you psychic? Can you like deal with it from the car or do you have to go get it? <laughs> okay, the orations of the Mass are a very specific set of things. The orations of the Mass consist of the oratio, which is, if you look at, um, let's look at the, the Feast of All Saints. So what it call, they call the prayer <clears throat> there on, it'll be 1265. There, the, the orations are three things, and they're in, there are three of them, and they're in every Mass. The first is the oratio, or the, sometimes it's called the collect. Okay? The second is the secret. And the third is called, is the post-communion. So collectively, when somebody says the orations of the Mass, we're talking about the collect, the secret, and the post-communion. Now, the reason why you have to know about those is because sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three. There's never more than three, or there are never more than three. Why? Because when Pope St. Pius X um, fixed the rules in, you know, whatever, what rule, time of 19, oh, whatever it was, um, he said there's a ma the maximum of three orations per Mass. And he did, people don't generally know it, but Pope St. Pius X, who was Pope until, what, 1910-ish, 11-ish, 12-ish, somewhere in that, I forget the exact year he died, maybe 12. He did a reform of the Missal, and I don't mean a Vatican II reform. It's every so often the, ch the church, meaning the Pope, has to clean up things that have gotten sloppy, okay? The practice of doing the Mass in certain places had gotten sloppy, and I don't mean the priest was drunk and, and you know, walking around the altar and, and doing the wrong Mass. I don't mean sloppy that way. What I mean is it had accretions. There were, the number of orations kept on growing so that the, the, the doing the orations took almost as long as doing the Mass in certain places. Oh, let's add on an oration for this. Let's pray for the Pope. Let's pray for the church. Let's pray for my mother. Let's pray for a happy death. Let's pray for rain. Let's pray for our enemies. Yes? How did they add things on without? Because it wasn't specified that there was that. No, th all those prayers were in there at the time. That's not the problem. The problem was it wasn't specified you had to limit yourself to three of them. So it was at the priest's discretion, and if you had a verbose priest who just, you know, oh, I'll say, you know, my mother's out in the congregation, I'm going to say the one for mothers, and then, you know, oh, we're going to pray for this, pray for that. So um, Pope St. Pius X said, maximum of three. Uh, and likewise, it's something akin to Pope St. Pius the uh, the fifth also did this when he canonized the Missal. He, he eliminated a bunch of the, the um, poetry and stuff like that, that local dioceses had added in. Some of the poetry is still there, like in the funeral mass, um, the Dies Irae, or the mass for Paschal times, the Victime Pascale Laudis. But individual bishops had set up local masses, and, and if they had something akin to a poet laureate in their diocese, they had added all these poems, which you would generally do before the gospel. And they had become so numerous that Pope St. Pius X said, no, these are the ones we're keeping, and everything else, you know, it, it's not going in this, the, the missile. All right, so, the orations. The collect, the secret, and the post-communion. Now, getting back to then the, the mass for today, 
Propter of octave gaudiamus, which is the mass for All Saints' Day. Gloria, which means we, you, know, you say the Gloria, which is in there. Because um, you know, even though it's in the ordinary, there are certain masses with Glorias, and there are certain masses without Glorias. There are um, masses with credos, and ma some masses without credos. And there's a number of rules. We don't have to go into those, really, because all you have to do is look in here and say, credo, no credo, that's, I'm good with that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but you see, a Gloria is important from our point of view, because if a Mass has a Gloria, then what you say at the end is, ite misa est. If there's no Gloria, you don't say ite misa est, you say benedicamus domino, okay? So the Gloria and the ite are linked just as the lack of it is linked to the benedicamus domino. All right, so we know now, so we have the Mass of the Feast, Gloria, and when it's, it'll say in here, second to this, that, and the other thing, and sometimes third to this, that, and the other thing. Those are the orations they're talking about. And they're not just, they're not always the same prayers, and they're not, um, they're not at ad libitum of the priests except for one um, at certain times of the year. One of the three, the third one, is up to the priest's choice. They're, they're specified, but here we have a choice. So, second to the Holy Ghost. So that means, and what this means is, after the first of the uh, time you do one of the three orations, then you do a second one to what's specified here. And if it says a third one, then you do a third one. Okay? So here we have um, second to the Holy Ghost. So find, if you can, then in your missal, the prayer to the Holy Ghost, 827 here, and you said 16, 1716 in the um, St. Andrews and somewhere else in the other ones. Now here the priest has a choice. Here the priest has a choice for the third one. By the way, um, for those of you who become very proficient at following the Mass, at the end of an oration, there is a conclusion, we call it. And a conclusion um, is the, the type, the form of the conclusion of a prayer is determined by who is mentioned in the prayer and to whom it is addressed, okay? The normal one is, you know, per dominum nos and through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God forever and ever, and amen. That's the most common conclusion. And that is, if the entire prayer is addressed to God the Father, you use that one, okay? Um, but there's other ones. You don't really have to know that much. It's, we have to know that up at the altar. But I'm mentioning it because you'll hear different, different conclusions and you might be interested enough to look those up. The other thing is, if there are three orations, like there are today, after the first one and after the third one, so you do, you do the collect of the mass of the day, then, uh, well, I'll just show you actually. Okay, um, I just want to get this out of the way and then we'll go through starting at the beginning. You know, and I want to make sure all your ribbons are in the right place. Uh, okay, so for example, the prayer for the mass of today, the oration. Uh, sorry, I forgot to turn it off. My faithful parishioners are texting me and I forgot to turn this off. So before the the first and the third oration, or first and second orations, um, that are the collect and the post communion, the priest said Dominus Vobiscum et cum Spiritu tu, oremus, and then says the collect. Okay. Now, if there's another one after that, then oremos again, and then the collect, 
But if there's a third one, the second collect doesn't have a conclusion. You just launch into the third collect. Like I said, li little details, if you're following very closely, you're going to wonder, well, why does he just keep going? You know, why, why didn't he stop that prayer's over? And the reason is, there's, if there's three orations, there's no conclusion after the second. And there's no oremus before the third. You just launch in. Okay, so we've set up our, our uh, missiles then for the, the Feast of All Saints. We've got the two collects, uh, the, uh, the second and third um, orations marked out. We have the ordinary marked out. Let's see what else is in there. Um, okay, oh yes, the option. The third collect, uh, third oration is, is for the church or the pope. Now, that's a little shorthand, actually, because the cho you have the choice, and where it says for the church, it's actually against the enemies of the church, okay? And you have a choice. Or you could do the one for the pope. Now, in my kind of reasoning, if you're praying against the enemies of the church, in these days, you're already praying for the pope. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I never pick the third one, that other one, I always pick um, against the enemies of the church if I have the choice. Because we pray for the Pope in the canon of the Mass anyway. So might as well have a little diversity, the word of the day. Or diversity, we're into diversity. It has to do with what orations we pick. <laughs> okay, now, so let's, let's pretend. Now you've got all your ribbons in order. Let's... The other thing that you would have to look for, if it were uh, an unusual kind of mass, certain times of the year or certain things, you're in, is to where to stick, stick your ribbon in which preface. The preface is what comes right before the sanctus, okay? Um, and, but the most common ones, the preface of the Holy Trinity, which we're not using today, but the common preface, which we are using today, are in the ordinary there for you. Um, you may want to look at where the rest of your prefaces are because um, they can be tucked away in different parts of your missile. We won't need it right now, but if it were, for example, the Feast of Christ the King, which we just had, there's a special preface for that which isn't right there in the ordinary. You have to turn to that page. If it's, you know, um, Easter time, there's another preface yet. If it's if it's a funeral mass, there's another preface yet. There's, a, there's dozens of prefaces, depending on what the mass is you're saying. Okay, so let's then just go to the beginning of mass. Now, um, so it begins, that we turn to the ordinary of the mass, which is the part that's the same all the time. Okay, so it'd be in Nomine Pathis, it's a bit of Psalm 42, etc. You can skip to the end of Psalm 42, and then there's the Confiteor, and so forth, the Priest Confiteor, the Altar Boys Confiteor. Um, there's the rest of the prayers at the foot of the altar, the Deus to Conversus Vivificabis Nos. It tells you the, the prayer that the priest says walking up the steps. The Alfredo Nobis, which on, in the Lausanne is 759. Um, it also tells you the prayer that when he gets to the altar, which is the Oramos Te Domini on 760. And right below that, you'll say, it'll say the introit. Okay? That is your clue to turn to where the introit is. Okay? So... The priest goes then over to the missal. We would, we would go to the Feast of All Saints, and he begins, Gaudiamus omnis in Domino, diem festum celebrantes, yada, yada, yada. Okay? Then goes back to the middle of the altar, and so we go back to the ordinary then. See, this is, it's all about flipping back and forth. So if you, if you look on the bottom of 760 in Lausanne, the intro it, and then you go up to the 761, and it has the Kyria. And then, if there's a Gloria that's on 762, which there is, 
Then there's the Gloria. And after the Gloria, there's a Dominus Vobiscum. And then you see at the bottom, it says the prayer. Okay. And anytime you see an instruction like the prayer, and there's a bunch of red writing under that, and there's no prayer visible, that means you've got to turn to it. You've got to find it and turn to it. Okay. So, we just finished the Gloria, Dominus Vobiscum et Cum Spiritu Tuo, and then Oremos. Yeah. Do you want the page numbers? Would you say the page numbers for the your missile? Say Anders, do you want the page numbers for the Saint? Oh, that would be nice. Sure. At the same time. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, so what? Is, what's the uh, Saint Andrews then? Now, is, are people able, um, I'll, I'll take pauses if you like while you flip to the right page. Are you, are you all now on where it says the prayer or, with, or the oration or the, okay. So then over to the, the mass that we're saying, which is that of all saints, and it's it would be Dominus Vobis et cum spiritu tuo oremos. And see where that prayer starts, omnipotens sempiter Deus? That would be 1265. And see... And at the end, it, it just hints, it gives you enough to know what the conclusion is. Perdominum is short for Perdomin through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who liveth and reigneth with God, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God forever and ever. Amen. Okay, short for that one. All right, so after that, then it says second to the Holy Ghost. The priest then said, yeah, and, not, and 827. 827. And the priest says then, Oremos, once more, and goes into um, Deus qui corda fidelium sancti spiritus. You see that one? 7216. Or 827 in the Lasans. In honor of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Excuse me. I don't care what that says. Holy Spirit is Nova Sorda. I remember when they started changing, you know, to the Holy Spirit. And all. My parents actually went to this faculty meeting at, at, at school and said, what is this Holy Spirit stuff? And the priest was there. He goes, well, saying Holy Ghost scares children. And so we decided we're changing it to Holy Spirit. That's what the priest told the parents at the, at my Catholic school meeting when my parents said, what is this Holy Spirit nonsense? Because we've never heard that before in our lives. And the priest told them, well, we're changing it because the word ghost scares children. Wow. <laughs> we were all terrified. Yeah. <laughs> terrified. <laughs> What's that? Well, Holy Ghost? Oh, of course. And that's, but that's an, it's an English thing anyway. So it, doesn't, it doesn't work in other languages because it sounds very much like Holy Spirit in other languages. So. But in, in, in English, we have different words for the Holy Ghost, which is the third person of the Trinity, and the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of God's holiness, which is also in the Old Testament. Okay, so at the end of um, the prayer of the Holy Ghost, there, there's no conclusion for that. And when we go to the other one, the priest will say, which will be in this case, the um, 
It says, for God's holy church on 825 there. 1710. 825 and 1710. And then there's the prayer. Um, Ecclesiae tu eques domini. Okay. And then that one now, it being the third oration, has a conclusion. Per dominum nostrum iesum Christum fidium tu. All right, so now we're, we're done with the part where it says the prayer or the oration or the color, okay? Next it says, what's next in the ordinary? After the prayer. The epistle, what's an epistle? It's the wife of an apostle, right? No? Nobody's awake. <laughs> All right, so it says the epistle, but lo and behold, in the ordinary, there, there's no epistle there. So what do you do? Back to the feast of today. And it says lesson, which is the epistle there. 1265. 1547. And in this case, the lesson is from the book of the Apocalypse. And the reason why they're throwing us a curveball there and calling this lesson instead of epistle, even though the ordinary says go to the epistle, is because most of them are epistle. Epistle means a letter. You write an epistle to somebody, you write them a letter. And in the, in the, most of the epistles are epistles. It's, you know, from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, or the letter of St. Peter, or the letter of St. James. The epistle, epistle, epistle. However, this one is actually from the book of the Apocalypse, which is not an epistle. So the epistle in this case is not an epistle, but it's still in the epistle spot, and so we call it a lesson. But, but a number of these epistles are from the Old Testament. Yeah, a lot of them from the Old Testament too. And then it'll say lesson from, or whatever, as well. So at the end of the Apocalypse one, which is rather long, and very repetitive, and, and I'm sure could make you go to sleep, because it's all about, it, it's all about the different tribes of Israel and the 12,000 signed from each tribe. And I always get to the tribe of Benjamin with much joy, because that's the last one. <laughs> so, then, at the end then, now, now we go back to, so um, in the ordinary again, so it'll say epistle, now you read the rubrics, where, let, let's look at 763 in Lassance, where it says the epistle. And in the rubrics in this particular book, I can say yours might have a variation on it, but it'll tell you the same thing or better tell you the same thing. It'll say, um, the, you, then, you read the, the epistle or lesson, and it says, um, after which the server says, Deo gracias, thanks be to God, then follows the gradual or tract or sequence. Okay, so you have a choice, whatever the Mass is that day, you have a gradual, a tract, or a sequence. Well, here we go. Um, Page 1266 in Lasance. After after the epistle, after the lesson, we have the gradual. Okay, so it has the gradual, and which in this case ends with an Alleluia verse. And then you don't have to flip back to the ordinary. I'll tell you. Then you it goes to, over to the gospel after that which is also in the proper for the day, All Saints. Now, it will note for you in, if you look on the calendar, um, and sometimes it will say in your missal, oh, here it does, it goes. Um, after, on page 1267, after the gospel, it says the creed, 765, and it says, it is said or sung every day during the octave, except on November 2nd, which is all souls, mm -hmm. which is when we're dressed in black and praying for dead people and we don't do creeds or glories. 
because it's not proper for that feast on that day. All right, so this, it, you do then, except for November 2nd, the creed is done every day during the octave. Every day we're celebrating the Feast of, of All Saints for an entire week. So you would go back then to the ordinary. And then now at the bottom of 765 in mine, nice, the Nicene Creed. Um, some just say the creed, credo, whatever. Um, there's kind of no need to specify in the Missal because the only one we use at Mass is the Nicene Creed anyway. There are other creeds, but we use them in the breviary and not in the Mass, so it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter to you. So the Nicene Creed... Um, on and on and on. Now, 767, the offertory. So at the end of then, the end of the creed, there's a Dominus Vobiscum et Conspiratio, and then it says the offertory, right? Mm -hmm. You got that in the order? So, th so then, as they say in French, flippez vous le missal. <laughs> And um, at the bottom of 1267, you'll see offertory. This is on 1549. Okay, now you get a break for a while. Because, yeah, you get to sit down for one thing. And then the, the priest is doing the offertory. And, and they're the offertory prayers. You don't have to flip anywhere is what I'm saying. They're all right, one right after the other in here. Um, it, you know, gone to 768, the offertory of the chalice, etc. cetera. Um, 770, the lavabo. Right. Then 771 in the ordinary of the Lassans, the, um, the prayer of Sushipe Sancti Trinitas, and then the priest kisses the altar, turns around and says, Orati Fratres. The altar boys say the Sushipiat. And that brings us to 772. If anybody needs me to, to pause, put the pause button on, please let me know. I will be happy to. <clears throat> I will pause for three milliseconds for anybody who needs to catch up. Maybe femtoseconds, those are even better. So the, um, we're down then on 772, you see the secret prayer which isn't really that secret since you all have it in your book. But it's called secret because it's done silently. Okay, so the secret prayer then, you go back to November 1st, um, 1268 in mine. And Yes. So you've got the secret from the feast, and guess what? The secret's one of the orations, and so then what? We do the other two secrets that we have. So then 827, the secret to the Holy Ghost, and then 825, the secret for God's Holy Church. No, there's only the first one for that feast itself. Right. The octave has different. We're not on the feast. We're in the octave. Huh? Not in my they don't have any? No. So you need to read the missile on page 1559. And what does it say? It says, it says that within the octave of all saints for November 3rd, 5th, 6th, and 7th, uh, there's a second column, a third column, 
the creed and then there's no, no more secrets and no more post Yeah, there are. You can't have two colleagues. They're all hooked up. If you have one, you have one of each. If you have two, you have two of each. And if I'm, you have telling, I'm just telling you what the missile says. Are you, it's not, it, it's maybe not clear, but that's not what it actually says. Well, the second bullet, Holy Ghost, third bullet, third so Right, so what page is that on? Well, yeah, but the secret, if there's, you just, that's why you need to buy the calendar. <laughs> because sometimes books like that will be either unclear or tell you you have a misprint or something like that. Yeah, it follows that when you, they don't have to tell you because if they're, if the kala, they're saying the, or, the second and third orations are for this and for that. That's, it's, I guess, just implicit in, in yours. I mean, mine doesn't say anything about anything. So, you know. Okay. Okay, so then we go back there. So we, we've, we've said the one for the Holy Ghost, 827. You go back and say the secret for the persecutors of the church, the enemies of the church on 825. Okay, and at the end of the last secret is the preface. Now, in the Lassance, the first preface it gives you is the preface to the Holy Trinity, which is just for certain Sundays. So it's not that one. The one you want is the preface for weekdays, also known as the common preface, which in here is 775. 969. Okay, preface for weekdays. And at the end of the preface comes the sanctus, right? So at the end of the preface you have suplice, suplici confessione dicentes, then sanctus, 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 etc. After the sanctus, the canon begins. And you don't have to do a lot of flipping as, uh, as long as the canon is going on, which is a good long time. So that's the good news. So it starts the canon, promoblationem, the consecration, uh, all those other things. Let's flip ahead to, so there's communion, on use day, So you don't have to flip anywhere until the communion verse 792 in here. So it says the communion, and it doesn't have a communion listed there. So you go back to the Feast of All Saints, and you'll see, lo and behold, on 1268, a, a prayer that says communion. Now the communion is not one of the orations, so it doesn't it doesn't have a conclusion. It's it's more it's usually just part of a, a psalm or something from the gospels or something like that. Oh, we're way after that. Now we're, we've ended the canon. We've we've finished consecration. We've finished communion of everybody. We finished the ablutions. Where was the sixth part of the mass? Nine eighty-six, right? In it's over on Saint Andrews. Nine eighty-six of the. Okay, so after the communion, you don't really have to flip back, but the priest just goes back and says Dominus Vobiscum et Conspiratu, and then goes back for the post communion. Okay, now if you, if you want to just see where it says that, after 792 at the bottom it says the communion, at the top it says the post-communion. So 
And so, post communion, then, Dominus Vobiscum et cum Spiritu tuo, oremos. And then the first one is from the feast, which is da quesimus domine fidelibus populi. To, oh, okay? Which is on 1768 in here. And then, of course, you have another oremus, and then 827. The uh, post communion to the Holy Ghost, and then 825, the post communion against the enemies and persecutors of the church. Now, I've kind of used as that example the most complicated you're ever going to get. So you can, you can rest a little easy because let's pretend it were actually November 1st, okay? All you would need is the ordinary and the feast for All Souls Day. So you only need two ribbons and everything would be found just going back and forth between those two. You, don't, you wouldn't have to find the Holy Ghost and the other one on there. So if, like if you look on the calendar, Feast of All Saints, it just says proper feast, Gaudiamus, Gloria, Credo, common preface, Ite. And that's as simple as it gets for that. So I, I kind of started you with the complicated one because it, they do get complicated. Um, okay. Um, how is everybody doing? Okay, like I said, the, the thing is, start on the ordinary, and no, and but set up your missile at home before you come to mass, so you know where the proper for that particular mass is found, and then you. It's just a matter of flipping back and forth. So I'll, I'll do that again for you, but with the simple case, and then you can complicate your lives later. <laughs> yeah, we got them over the bookstore. Oh, so it's okay. Yeah, we got them. Okay, so let's say um, it's the Feast of All Saints, as simple as it gets. Uh, 1269, oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, tw- 1265 in this one. Feast of All Saints. Okay, I'll just, all we need is those two here. So, the order of the Mass begin, begins in Nomine Patris, etc. On page here, 756. Uh, yeah. Goes on until 760. Do you have a missile? No, Linda, you got a missile? No. Oh, were you able to follow it? Um, my numbers are completely different, so I just... You don't have a, an Andrews either? I haven't seen Andrews, but it doesn't, it's not the same numbers as so. No, but him, as the ones, he's, he's saying the St. Andrews numbers. No? It's not. Oh, I knew it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. There are more than one St. Andrews with different pages. Okay, so you go continue, then you, you do the intro it, then you get back to the ordinary, the curie, the gloria, and then it says the prayer, back to the proper, all saints, where it says the prayer, and you do that. Then back again to the ordinary, um, the epistle, the gospel, the creed, and then you get to a point where it says uh, the offertory. And then it's back to the Feast of All Saints. Flip again. You do the offertory prayer, and then you flip back to the ordinary for the offertory of the Mass. Not the offertory prayer, but the offertory prayers that the priest says to offer the host and the wine and all. So then, after that whole offertory then, um, there's the secret, it'll say the secret prayer, so you turn once again to All Saints, the, the secret prayer, and then 
back for the preface, which in, the, in this case is the common preface, or the preface for weekdays, then Sanctus, then the whole canon, the whole, whole, whole canon, consecration, both consecrations, um, continue the canon, the paternoster, etc., agnus dei, uh, communion of, of the priest, and then if there's anybody there, communion of the faithful, and then the, after communion of the faithful is all done, and the um, ablutions are done, the ablutions are the cleaning up, um, purifying the sacred vessels, the chalice, the patent, and if, they're, if, they're, if you use the ciborium, then purifying the ciborium, and with, it, with the appropriate prayers, then that all being done, and the chalice is all covered up again, then it goes back to the, um, what they call the, the communion verse. So the priest goes over, does a communion, you flip to the Feast of All Saints, and then it goes into the post-communion from the Feast of All Saints, then back again, and the priest will say the Placia Tibi, give the blessing, last gospel, and you're done. So that's all there is to it, is practicing when to go back and forth. That's, that's really all you have to know there, okay? Any specific questions? If you don't have a liturgical calendar for 2018, you pretty much you still follow it? Or? You have to, well, there's, we always have one on the wall as you go in church. Okay. Um, we always keep that one there okay. for people that don't have one. Right. Um, yeah, other than that. Do you have any like, extra flying around anymore? No. Huh? I don't think it. Yeah, the bulletin has it in it, too. It tells you what's where. And the, it uses the St. Andrew's Missal. But if you know where things are in the Lasans and you have Lasans, you can find it from that. Does it tell the Lasans or not? Are there any online sources? Um. No, there are calendars. See, that's why I'm saying yeah, it's the. I looked online and no, it only tells you what the <coughs> what it is that day, the mass. It doesn't yeah. tell you all the particulars. And the reason why it's worth the trouble to learn how to follow the mass with the missal. Shh. The reason why it's worth the trouble to learn how to follow the mass with the missal is think about what happened at Vatican II. At Vatican II. The Pope, the bishops, and the priests lied to the people and said, oh, this is a translation of the old mass in Latin. And they all go, oh, good, yeah, it's in English now. It's the English mass. Well, no way. But if they had been following in their missals, they would know that what they were getting after was not a translation of what they had before, not anything even close to it. And there might have been some sort of, you know, revolt or something like that. But as, there was, as it was, I think not, as, uh, not enough people were following in their missiles. They were just sitting there, you know, sitting there. Oh, it's on the Latin. And how many times, I don't know how many times you get this, I get this. Oh yeah, before Vatican II, it was all in Latin, you know, and that rude priest had his back to us. <laughs> and, you know, and, and we didn't understand anything that was going on. I love to. I always used to love to have my mother with me when people would say that, because she was saying, you know, we had our missiles, and she said, couldn't you read? You, you know, all you needed was a missile, and you and you would know what was going on. Of course, they were too lazy. They'd rather just sit there and, you know, hope for the infused knowledge of languages of tongues of the Holy Ghost to, to attack them. All right. Then...